Hey y'all, Hooch here. For the next vid, I wanted to watch a quick little video on some big changes that are coming to Twitch. So for me personally, as someone who just started streaming a few weeks ago, I don't think from at least the glimpses I saw that this will necessarily impact me right away, but it is curious to see both the direction that Twitch itself is going, especially now that alternatives are starting to come out. If you're watching this here on YouTube, I could again, potentially stream on YouTube. You could now actually stream on both websites and Twitch doesn't ban you for that like they used to. Um, but I'm going to be watching a breakdown from Ludwig, who is a guy who did kind of made his bones on Twitch, but then eventually moved over to YouTube. Um, so you, he's not going to pull any punches. He's going to be, I think, hopefully as a you know, fairly objective, but also fairly direct. The thumbnail itself, of course, is, you know, they didn't just tweet this, but this is uh, maybe I need to step up my thumbnail game because I don't do enough. Uh... Is it clickbait? I, I think it's fair to call it clickbait, but if it works, it works. So, uh, yeah, I got to watch this. I'm going to try to absorb as much as possible because Ludwig is a master streamer and he's navigated now at least two different streaming sites. So he knows a lot about the underlying rules and regulations on what you can and can't do uh, within the industry. Bringing up Twitch's big problems is like bringing up my mustache. You're tired of hearing uh, it at this point. Be. But nope. there is okay. a huge announcement that Twitch made that people are quite upset about. How upset? Well, Tips, the leader of OTK, said if this change it, okay. goes through, OTK will be leaving wow. Twitch. Which is Holy crazy shit. because they are one of the most viewed organizations on Twitch. Also added the CEO. Yeah. I mean, losing OTK, I think, would be... I know that there's... It's probably, what, 100 Thieves, OTK, Offline TV. So, I mean, it wouldn't be completely gone. But if OTK leaves, you could see some other big streaming orgs follow suit because they are not an org just to, like, host each other, right? They are an org because they collaborate. They share some costs, I assume, like video editors. But they also do events together. And those events are, you know, streaming is becoming more and more, like, tv is and was in terms of production value they have stages they have sound crews they have lighting it is no longer a guy like me in a webcam in his room just talking there's certainly still components to that and each individual from uh, an org probably does end up streaming largely uh in those environments but again these the next iteration of streaming is going to be something on par or getting closer from a production value standpoint uh, to TV, but that with that comes an inc incredible amount of cost. In fact, uh, Ludwig's, I believe it's girlfriend, uh, if it's his wife, I apologize, <laughs> runs a baking show. I, f I think it's Master Baker, where they're in a kitchen. They're you know they've got all this equipment for doing a baking competition, and that is far different from somebody cooking you know bacon and eggs in, in their kitchen talking to chat. And so they need sponsors for that. And if they're going to cut off, if they're going to kneecap sponsorship because Twitch isn't getting a cut of that. Presumably, I don't believe they are. I think they're basically doing an end around Twitch. I understand Twitch's perspective of, well, we pay a lot of money in hosting and, and letting people live stream. And so we need ad revenue and we're losing hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars. But on the other hand, this industry only grows and evolves with things like that so there's got to be a medium and we'll see if they actually are trying to go for a medium or if they're just trying to flex their muscles and say you won't leave because now that orgs exist and the pooling of resources exists i think creators are starting to have a lot more negotiation uh power than just one person a pretty bold move and if you just search up twitch right now and go through all of twitter people aren't happy it's impressive how Charlie. twitch manages to make the most dog shit changes imaginable okay i don't say it lightly but i think this is a legitimate situation where streamers could boycotting consider wow. boycotting the reason that's surprising to me is I, I could be misremembering but i think asmongold made there was some boycott that tried to happen and the different there's going to be differences so it maybe is not the best truest apples to apples comparison but there was a situation where people were calling for boycotts and asmongold was straight up like no nah, like i'm not going to do that like it, it's not going to accomplish anything basically so the fact that he might be he hasn't technically called for it he says streamers should consider but again orgs could for example get all their members together and, and agree to boycott collectively so it's not the same as like having a true union 
Um, but each org sort of serves, at least from a boycott perspective, a walkout perspective as a mini union. So if the biggest orgs all come to some sort of agreement where one week they just don't stream, that's effectively a boycott because the top streamers are going to represent 99% of viewership. I mean, as a small creator, maybe that's good for me because maybe people end up finding my channel, but my peak is, is, is a drop in the bucket for these guys. And my peak viewership is, a, is not even a drop in the bucket for somebody like Asmund gold or these guys that are 50, 60, 70 K plus in viewership. So that would be surprising uh, if Asmund gold of all people calls for, and even stages effectively a, a boycott. Twitch. Twitch is changing sponsorship guidelines to be so restrictive that it makes it impossible for streamers to even advertise. Okay, well, let's first address what the fuck everybody's talking about. That'd be good, yeah. It all started <laughs> with a single article posted by Twitch about branded content guidelines. Okay. Maybe the most boring, dry article yeah. you could imagine has That's usually where they made sneak it the in. entirety of Twitter implode. Boring stuff uh, is where they sneak about in. Twitch. But, but what is the actual uh, content of it? It started with point one, which is branded content disclosure tool. Basically, now when you do a uh, branded stream, you have to disclose it, which yeah. is a law good, right? in the US of A at think. the very least yeah. and is a People good thing. You should know when you're yeah. watching branded content as a viewer. And if you check this little box, then it'll be embedded into the stream. Great. Easy. Point one, not a problem. But yeah. like most shit sandwiches, it's not the top layer of bread you there. have to worry the about. PR it's strategy what's in the of... middle, which is point two permitted in a prohibited brand sponsorship formats. We recognize that streamers want to collab with brands, okay. but as outlined in the TOS, we maintain the exclusive right to sell, serve, and display ads on Twitch services. Okay. And yeah, I mean, in a previous video, we talked about, uh, what was it? I forget the exact video, but we talked about, the, I think it was the, it was the Overwatch 2 announcement when they killed uh, PVE, that they had the announcement where the first one was, the first part of the announcement was sort of some fluff, feel good, we're doing something for you. And then followed up by the absolute axing of PVE. And it's it's a way to sort of soften the blow. Um, now, in terms of this, and we're going to go through it entirely, I assume he will. Um, you know, they do technically own the right. I mean, how else does Switch make money? You know, it's always hard to feel bad for a mega corporation even before Twitch bought, uh, was bought by Amazon, they were, they were bought by for a billion dollars. So they weren't exactly small. But now that they're owned by Amazon, it is hard to feel bad in a sense. Now, I'm never going to be a shill for any corporation, let alone a megacorp. However, there is only really one way that I'm aware of, or I guess two ways. Um, one is running ads, which as somebody who doesn't have Twitch Turbo and as somebody who hopefully will hit affiliate soon, I, I probably won't run ads because I can't tell you how many times and you probably felt the same where I click off of a stream because I get hit with an ad and you look in the upper right and it says one of eight. It's like, I'm not doing it. Like I will watch an ad here and there. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm not watching eight ads back to back 20, whether they're 10 seconds, whether they're 30 seconds, I'm just not doing it. Uh, and that kills, I think also smaller streamers who either agree to run ads or maybe they don't and they're just forced to i think you can turn them off but in general that's just like a terrible viewing experience speaking purely as a viewer i absolutely hate that so the other way they make money is you know subscriptions and they take a piece of that but whatever the breakdown is there's going to be vastly more viewers than subscribers a small percentage or relatively small percentage is going to be actual uh subscribers and so the idea that they can't run ads is ridiculous but also the idea that they can potentially kneecap everyone from uh, bringing some level of ingenuity and bringing live streaming forward into the future and out of just everyone's bedroom and into, you know, that master baker competition. Like OTK runs a number of events, like a sports sport event. Um, those are interesting. People want to see them. They, they absolutely do. And without the ability to lower the costs or even make them profitable, but even just make them, uh, like net uh, net zero, the costs of video teams and lighting teams and, and renting out locations and all that kind of stuff. Like you pay rent. And so you can stream in your bedroom. I don't own a sports arena. So you're going to have to rent out an entire sports arena because you can't have like little kids in the background or people like messing things up. 
And then again, you need a video team and everything else. So this means that you may not insert, embed, or burn in pre-recorded ads, in. Okay. Un uh, ad units into your live streams. What does that mean? Well, they gave a nice little infographic. Somebody worked really hard at Twitch to make these graphics. They look really good, but they made a lot of people upset. So let's go through it. Here are the here are the formats permitted for ads that streamers might want to run on their Twitch channel. You can do panels, which is like the thing below. It's basically mm -hmm. the description, something nobody actually reads. Yeah. Uh, you can showcase products. Fair enough. You can include links uh, or maybe have like a pinned link or a move okay. bot that posts the link. And I, I would really love for y'all, any of y'all who end up watching this and if you watch stuff on Twitch, like what is the kind of advertisement you actually um, engage with? Like putting aside ads themselves because you're sort of forced to watch those unless you click off, of course, or you have an account that doesn't have ads, um, like a sub or, or turbo or something. Um, I'm curious to know like what you got, like have you actually clicked on pinned comments? Have you actually seen a little logo in the upper right or something of one of these streams and in, in you know when i say interact i mean basically at least go and look at the website if not actually purchase something personally i don't think i have my computer is five years old and i'm going to be getting a new one at some point um and so i'll look at like the the star forge pcs that the guys bought over at otk but i'm also get my build it myself because as much as they meme about it it is always going to be cheaper but I at least I'm aware of Starforge because of that. So in a way that kind of worked, but yeah, I'm curious what you guys would consider both a um, not intrusive and B uh, something you would actually potentially use and engage with. Occasionally in the chat, you can discuss products and be like, wow, check out my very cool Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. It has drift still. I don't know how that's legal. <laughs> and you can play that sponsored sucks. games. Okay, great. That's okay. all fine. But what are the non-permitted ones, the ones with limitations, the ones that started the shitstorm that has caused Twitter to lose their mind? Well, okay. the first one, 3%. logos on stream. On stream brand overlays are limited to 3% of screen size. This is crazy. That seems tiny. I I've never also, even like, heard 3% is like, like, how do you even... I, I mean, I use Twitch's studio, which is their like proprietary plug and play, easy to use kind of OBS. And there's nothing in there that I'm aware of unless, well, maybe you like calculate pixel size, but then like what constitutes that? Because if it, unless it's a perfect square, right, it's going to be like, tr try to calculate the area <laughs> of this can because you've got this sort of half circle, half circle, and then a, I mean, it's technically, so it's a cylinder, but it's going to be a square in terms of 2D. So like, who is going to be policing? This seems so arbitrary. Is it then on you to prove that it is 3% or are they going to send you something where they like have auto calculated it and then you're going to get fined? Like that seems before. horrifying. That seems horrifying to both police and also to adhere to, which is like the worst of, that's just the worst of both situations. 3%. Partially because that is weirdly specific. I don't even know what 3% of a screen is. Yeah. Luckily, some other people found out what it is. It okay. turns out this is 3%. Okay. This is it in square so boxes, form. Right? This is it in banner form. Oh, cool. And this is it if you were put it on the side. Okay. That almost seems like more than 3%. Maybe my spatial awareness is just off. But it almost seems more. I mean, nobody likes restrictions, so nobody's going to like this in general. But I don't know that they get that much bigger because then you're just hiding too much of the screen, right? So like to try to be fair to some degree to Twitch, like I've watched streams that have uh, logos for advertisement overlaid. And I don't think that they're much bigger than that upper left. If they're bigger at all. And, and the lower left one too. I don't, I haven't really seen anyone use the one on the right, this like bar, this uh, uh, vertical bar. Maybe somebody has, but to try and be relatively fair to Twitch. I, yeah, I don't, it is fucking tiny. It is literally smaller okay. than my webcam. Okay. It, it, it is not a large part of the screen. But do you want so that the would logo impact a lot, webcam? a lot of, okay. of banner ads that people regularly do on their Twitch streams? Uh, and then the second one is the one that people are very stressed out about, which is str uh, that streamers are not allowed to insert video ads directly into their streams. So I think this is the one, and he'll go through it, but I think this might be the one that really kneecaps events that people hold because they will straight up run just a full video ad. Um, they basically, if you think about it, like 
normally the event would be full screen instead of a webcam. And then they basically invert it and they put um, like this little square would be maybe like the event. So you can see it's still running in the background. Uh, and then they'll run, you know, some successive amount of ads to, you know, as sponsorships who are paying for the event. So this is basically like uh, you are sponsored by Campbell's Soup and then you play a Campbell's Soup ad while you are streaming for 60 seconds and then it's back to you jerking off, watching the button, whatever the hell's going on. Don't, and they say, no, that, you Campbell's. cannot do that. And then there's a couple additional ones saying, hey, you can't do banner ads, which I guess would also burned fall in. under the 3% it anyway. Burned uh, in display ads or banner ads directly into their stream. It says they can but it's just 3%. Although that was somebody saying this is what 3% would look like, not. So I guess you could do a banner ad if it was 3% of the screen. And then you can't have any burned maybe? in audio ads, which I've never, I've never heard about. Burned in audio. I guess that's like if you're doing a podcast, maybe oh, and you yeah, have okay. like a podcast ad read. Yeah, I Apparently never... that's also not allowed to okay. happen. So all, all of these things just outright ban. And this is the main thing people are upset about. Do people uh, use which, Twitch which I think for for podcasting i guess they might record it i've never i don't i'm not a huge podcast guy but if i do listen to them they'd either be on spotify or um youtube and as far as i know there's no issues with re with doing ad reads because most podcasts i've seen that are big enough to have sponsors have straight up ad reads in them so i don't i don't think at least youtube has a problem with that but it's pretty fucking dumb by twitch because this is the main way that people who run huge events are able to yeah. make money, including me. Oh, That's I how I make on. my money. Now, I'm on YouTube, so it's not as big of a problem for me. But for my <laughs> mogul dick. chess boxing, here's a baked-in mid-roll ad dick. from Cash App. Th yeah. That is all it is. Uh, it's, a, it's a total uh, uh, okay. uh, baked-in ad that, that would not be allowed under the current Twitch guidelines. Uh, similar to the KFC ad that we recorded that aired during the streamer awards, <laughs> another ad that just wouldn't be able to be aired, which is part of the reason. That would be crazy, actually, if they couldn't run the streamer awards at all on Twitch. Like Twitch would just miss out on not only so much good content, but things like the streamer awards, love them or hate them. It's something that's kind of an industry thing. Like it's an industry moment. It's a industry recognition of certain streamers of. Uh, sort of where streaming is as a whole and to just not have that on your site at all because you wouldn't have VODs because a lot of things if you don't necessarily stream on YouTube a lot of people put VODs and stuff on YouTube so you might stream on Twitch and put stuff on YouTube like I do and so YouTube still has that content effectively um, that would be I think a monumental error and they might do some pullback we'll see how much of this is already set in stone versus how much of this is proposed changes, but missing out on key industry uh, sort of foundational stuff, as well as these other creator events, which are only going to evolve and get better over time. I think it's a huge L. Reason They pay the big bucks, those big sponsors to be able to make events like that happen in the first place. And somebody on Twitter, Brian, said, the more I think about it, the more insane this is. Literally no event can run on Twitch under these guidelines. Tournaments, league, charity, all of them violate these in so many ways. And so I looked True. into it. Charities, right. yeah. I mean, literally, this is a Twitch Prime Gaming, or I guess an Amazon <laughs> Prime Gaming, Dude. A gaming banner giveaway. This is an ad right They get here. in trouble for and their own ad. well over 3% and breaks yeah. the rule of inserted a burned in display well, ads. imagine That's imagine getting some version of flag penalty whatever for a, a prime advertisement and amazon is themselves angry at you it's not allowed would you put it past a megacorp just some fragmented corporation that isn't talking to each other and doesn't really know what they're doing kind of thing like i wouldn't under the current guidelines i wouldn't now i fully believe that twitch is probably trying to target some specific groups of people and they're not going to blanket punish everyone across the board but they could be punishing individual creators now part of the reason i believe this and i guess we'll break this into two groups here people who are going to give twitch the most charitable interpretation and people who are going okay. to give twitch the least charitable I mean, binaries work better, I guess, in hypotheticals and people like like them in general because they're more easily digestible. But I'm at least trying to give them somewhat of the benefit of the doubt. But 
We've seen them do too now, many. Now, we're going with the latter, we're going with the least charitable interpretation. This means Twitch is going to outright cannibalize every single ad that anybody was trying to do, any individual creator, any esports organizer, and make them do mm -hmm. it through Twitch exclusively. Yeah, so that was my my real question there, and is like, I don't think they're trying to get events removed entirely. Their perfect world is just all the events run as they normally did and continue to evolve, get bigger, more interesting. But let's say each event is, let's say an event that takes it, that costs $400,000 to run, making it up. It could be more than that for all I know. But let's say it takes 400K to run an event uh, and they secure 500K in sponsors. Well, Twitch would come in and say, we want like 150K of that um, in order for you to just be able to host it on our services. And so you effectively have to then go out and raise uh, the price of a sponsorship, which will happen over time to a degree. Like every successive Master Baker uh, uh, streaming awards show that happens every year, the sponsorships will get more expensive. Production values will probably also increase. Although normally the sponsorships, try, you, you definitely want them to pace with, if not outpace, of course, the expenses because you want to be making money on the event. But it could, in a for a short term period at least, if not indefinitely, make it unfeasible or uneconomical to actually run an event because. Last year, let's say you had four sponsors or let's say you had five sponsors for like 40K a piece or something. Now you have to go to those people and say, well, it's not actually just a 10% year over year increase, which is easy enough for you to stomach as a sponsor, especially given the, the viewership and the, you know, what we were able to provide last time. We actually need a 40% increase, which is far harder to, to swallow for some sort of corporate budgeting uh, on advertisement. Believe me, like year over year increases of that degree are much harder to get corporations to swallow. And because of that, again, I think in a short term, you could see a real tightening on events, um, either in general or, or potentially just on Twitch and that shoving people over to YouTube. So it'll be really interesting to see if they just want a little cut. Corporations tend to not be reasonable or what you and I might consider reasonable, like a 5% or a 10%. They tend to want 25, 30, 40. They, they want as much as they can get, right? So if they're going to request uh, a 30% cut of all of that ad revenue, then they, then the creators like Ludwig here have to then go and secure sponsors for at least 30% plus whatever their yearly increase was going to be. And that's tough. That is tough. And maybe there's some supporting evidence. Like when they tweeted out a month ago, we're testing new experiences to connect streamers and brands by making sponsored streams work better for our community. So they already have things in place to improve their ad sales to their creators. And now they're removing the other options for creators. So you have mm. no option but to do all your ads through Twitch. That's the least charitable. What's the most charitable? They're getting up to date with a lot of the rules that other websites have in place, including okay. YouTube. Yeah. Embedded third-party sponsorships in ads and YouTube content. YouTube creators cannot include promotion sponsorships or other advertisements for third-party sponsors or advertisers in their videos where YouTube offers a comparable ad format. So that those last three words, I think the key, comparable ad format. So I think that's the reason why you still see ad reads in podcasts and such that are uploaded to YouTube, I'm guessing, is because there isn't a comparable ad format where the host of a podcast reads the ad, uh, if they're good at what they do, they they make a joke of it. They uh, so an example would be even non podcast um, historian, uh, internet historian, where he not only has a sponsor but he makes like a genuine and and usually succeeds at making an attempt of integrating the ad. It's definitely going to be like a hard left turn from whatever the video is, but it's funny, it's engaging, uh, it is custom to both the uh, sponsor itself, but also his style of comedy and, and content so that's not something that youtube is going to do or be able to provide they're just going to say send us a 30 second video and we will you know run it as a course of an ad um so i think i'm guessing that those three words comparable ad format is how a lot of these people are able to do what they do which is great like again i i i like that better i i don't think i'm the only one who feels like i would rather see an ad that is done by the content creator um, in a, in a unique, interesting, funny way. And I will actually watch those ads because they are actually funny. Whereas every other video, I mean, you can see just in the bottom, like 
I don't know, this is a new video, so it might not have it, but you can see where the mo quote, most replayed is. And it's usually right after the ad read. And it's just like, uh, Nord VPN is above and they just read the ad. Right. And it's like, well, nope, like I'm going past that. <laughs> so I appreciate this. And this to me is like, you know, YouTube got a rash of shit for a while. It was like every couple of years on how they were changing their ad revenue side of things and like lowering payments. But, uh, this is what you want to see. You want to see a corporation give as much control and flexibility to the creators as possible including but not limited to pre mid and post roll ads aka you shouldn't be allowed according to youtube to have a 60 second ad that you burn into your video that talks about i don't know nintendo switch joy cons and how they have bad drift <laughs> apparently that that <laughs> that wouldn't that. fly but if you've watched youtube for more than a week you know that does fly all the time yeah so I think it's some sort of policy that YouTube puts in place to punish groups of people that mm. might be cannibalizing too much of their ad sales because they're doing it at scale anyway. rather than punish creators. And this is a more charitable interpretation because this basically means Twitch's new guideline falls almost exactly in line with YouTube's guideline. The only caveat I'll say is logos. This one seems crazy still to me. And Twitch can also prove... This is the one that... And it could be because I'm new to content creation, new to streaming, but I would think three, you know, you would want to negotiate the smallest possible logo for the most amount of money. And there would be some kind of diminishing, diminishing return where let's say at 2%, you get $20,000 a month. And at 3%, you get $30,000 a month. So you're like, okay, it's roughly 1% equals $10,000 per month in terms of uh, ad revenue or uh, sponsorship revenue. But then at 4%, it starts to fall down to like 5K. And then when you go to 5%, it's only two additional 2,000. So like at that point, you're saying, okay, well, 3% is a sweet spot. And even though I could technically make more money, I mean, I could probably make more money if I just put the entire thing, just an entire full screen logo. But how many people are going to watch that, right? So maybe it's my lack of experience in the streaming area and in uh, dealing with sponsors and stuff. But this, this to me seems like the least crazy, but we'll see. Prove me wrong. This is a time will tell scenario. If in a month from now, Twitch is taking down every single creator who does have a burned in ad, a 60 second mid roll ad, or who does have a banner, then this is not at all what YouTube is doing. But in writing, it is the exact same. In practice, it could be a whole lot different. This thing still crazy to me. I don't know why where this three percent came from. It seems oddly specific. It seems way too punishing. It does seem both arbitrary and specific. Like why three percent? Um, but I'm I am. But I guess they had to come up with something. But also, like again, how do you how do you really police that? Hoping that this is Twitch's way. way of trying to target a group of people who is taking up too much of their ad sales because maybe they're doing it at scale and less so a way to specifically target individual creators who are doing ad sales, who are trying to make money to make ends meet. Okay. And he, he's mentioned this groups of people twice. I don't know who he's talking about because he hasn't elaborated at least yet. Uh, I, I agree. It's good for people who aren't making 300K, 400K, a million dollars a year to uh, not be targeted by this, but they also tend to also have the least negotiating power, right? Because what are they going to do versus Amazon? But, uh, yeah, because at the end of the day, that is most Twitch streamers. Most Twitch streamers aren't the top 0.0001% that you think of when you think of Twitch streamers yeah. It is people who are just making enough to live or have a good side hustle going. True. Um, and this brings me to the bigger point here, which is that Twitch has a PR problem. At its core, that is Twitch's biggest issue. They've been taking public L's for Nobody a while Nobody is yeah. going to give Twitch a charitable interpretation for anything True. they're doing because they have done nothing but make bad decisions over the past two plus years. Not only make bad decisions, but the way they announce these decisions is always articles that they post at 4 a.m. that are cold, <laughs> cut and dry, that don't actually answer the questions people want to know. Yeah. They even have an FAQ at the bottom of this huge article they posted, and all of the FAQ is about the branded, branded content. content announcement, aka point one of the two Which points, is the, one the that branded you content just nobody, disclosure yeah. tool. Nobody gives a fuck about that. Yeah. Yet every single question is about branded content and disclosure, with the exception of one all the way down here, which is what do you mean by burned in ads? And it just clarifies that you're not allowed to have any mid-roll ads. 
I feel like it would be a lot better okay. if Twitch were to be more personable. And they just got a CEO I mean, who is doing it. I wish a giant corporation would be more personable. Maybe. Uh, they certainly have the money to be, but they never are, right? So Interviews with VTubers, yeah. who seems a little more hip. They have a new guy whose, whose hair is like longer than mine, honestly. Uh, I don't think that makes him cool or not cool inherently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've seen him do a couple of different interviews. And like, he seems to have some knowledge of the ecosystem. At the very least, he knows about bigger creators. I wouldn't expect him to know about my channel or, or somebody who's you know a very small creator. That's just human nature. And also, he's literally got to run the company. He can't be just watching live streams 24-7. But uh, yeah, I mean, the, it, it, he seemingly was on a little bit of a PR blitz, uh, either to increase his own visib visibility or to start changing the perception of Twitch management. And this definitely takes whatever he did and drowns it like a kitten in a bathtub. So why not have like a sit down conversation and say, hey, these are our new guidelines. This is why we're doing it. We're trying to keep up to date with other competing websites like YouTube or whatever it is. It would feel a whole lot better if the message came from a human who seems like they care rather than an article that is trying to be shoved into the into the anal cavities of 4 a.m. Only to be posted by some Twitter journalists like Zach and then uh, talked about by every streamer known to man uh, who who hates the yeah. small little read they did about it. it I don't know. It, it, it just seems brain dead that they haven't figured that out by now and they haven't changed it. Uh, but that's but that's where we currently sit with Twitch uh, and with their new announcement. Damn. Time will tell. I am hopeful, always optimistic, that Twitch is not going to go out and attack every single individual who has a sponsorship that breaks these rules and that it's for some other reason. But it's Twitch. So they might just do that. Yeah, and I think they. I wonder how set in stone this is. But competitors like YouTube or even Kick, or the fact that they've not only published like an article but have visual graphical representations of it seems like this is coming down uh, from the mountain and actually going to be implemented. Or even Rumble, where it seems like a lot of creators are signing by the day. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. But that's another. That's another huge Twitch drama. That's why everyone's mad. I love it. And hopefully Twitch, come on, man. You know. Let's let's uh, let's let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Subscribe, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. OK, I was going to pause, but his eyes were closed. So I didn't want to do him dirty like that. Um, yeah, as a literally brand new content creator, this doesn't affect me now. It does uh, potentially make you look at an eye towards the future of is Twitch the place to be and the place to grow. You want to grow as much as possible on the platform in which you uh, continue to stream indefinitely or, or for long periods of time. So. It would be much better if there was a overwhelming feeling of optimism about Twitch as a platform and not just a, a biweekly L that they're taking um, for various reasons. So, yeah, uh, not great, but also I am genuinely curious to see kind of what he was talking about, like how they interpret their own rules, because this has been a consistent theme among tech companies in general is they lay out their own guideline. They'll call it guidelines, terms of service, whatever they want to call it. But how do they actually interpret? And then on top of that, how do they actually enforce? Um, and so if those YouTube policies are actually um, ones that technically all of these podcasts I mentioned who do in podcast ad reads are supposed to be violating and they just don't enforce it, that is fine but it is building a, a house on sand, on quicksand even, because at any moment they can decide to enforce it. In the same way that in reality, at any moment they can, like Twitch is doing now, decide to come out with new guidelines to uh, effectively really chop at your revenue or your ability to put on events or whatever you have it. In addition to that, it's very frustrating to both have a, an ax over your head that is these guidelines can change at any time. B, an ax over your head that is these guidelines can be interpreted in a number of different ways. And C, an ax over your head that says these guidelines can be enforced arbitrarily at any point or not enforced. So how do you make a career on that? I understand why a corporation wants it. It gives them unlimited flexibility to do whatever they want, whenever they want. But we are no longer in you know, the YouTube of old. We are no longer in the the only people putting up videos is just some kid playing a, a acoustic guitar or funny little things. These are billion. I mean, these guys make often millions, tens of millions, 
hundreds of millions of dollars on these YouTube channels. This is not a uh, village industry. This is very much big time. And so with that, one of the things that I think we should expect, and it would be great if we could get, is both A, reasonable guidelines, and B, a very clear understanding of what the guidelines are and how they will be enforced. Set in stone as much as possible. No vagary, no lawyer speak, no BS, just this is what we expect of our creators. This is how and when they will be enforced. And that is it. Please go and continue to make amazing content. So if I think that Twitch or YouTube or anyone communicated it like that, people would feel much better uh, as much as they would still complain over tightening of the belt, you know, lowering of payments, whatever, of course, but you would have a lot more goodwill generated. So in any event, that's it for me. Thank you so much. If you made it all the way through, as always, I appreciate any comments uh, in terms of either feedback or questions you might have still very new, like I said, to content creation. So any feedback, whether it's about my content itself or about things like audio quality levels, whatever, I appreciate all of it. If you liked it, please go ahead and subscribe. It really helps. And I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.